this is question number two from the June uh, 2011 BY1 paper. Uh, the question uh, is about uh, biosensors. Okay. And uh, we have a diagram here, uh, which is another way of representing a biosensor. So uh, throughout these uh, video uh, tutorials on exam uh, questions, uh, we've seen a number of ways uh, that the examiner can represent a biosensor. Uh, and this is uh, another such uh, example. Okay. Uh, just like to uh, point out a couple of things. We've got the uh, what's called the electrode there. Um, we have the partially permeable membrane. We have the immobilized enzyme. Okay. Uh, and we've also have then the glucose molecule and uh, what they describe as the substrate solution. So basically the uh, the biosensor or the electrode part of the biosensor is submerged in this uh, substrate solution. So that could be blood, it could be urine. All right. Now the, uh, the biosensor doesn't have any other uh, components listed, but of course you should know that there's a transducer there and there's an amplifier uh, within the biosensor. Okay. Um, so uh, that's the uh, biosensor there and uh, the first question then is asking uh, immobilized enzymes uh, that are used in biosensors must have certain properties. State two of these properties. Uh, okay so um, again this shouldn't be too uh, too difficult now we've we've covered uh, these um, properties and advantages of immobilized enzymes quite a lot through these questions. So um, basically then the uh, the immobilized enzymes must be uh, uh, stable or can be stable at higher temperatures or uh, a greater range of pHs of course. And uh, but particular for the biosensor the, the enzyme has to be specific uh, for the substance you want to uh, detect. Um, so those are two um, uh, features, properties of uh, an immobilized enzyme in use for biosensors. There you go. So I've just decided to uh, uh, quote the uh, stable at different temperatures property and specific to the substance uh, to be measured. Uh, the next question then is asking you to explain the function of the partially permeable membrane. Uh, you know, more often than not, this comes up all the time when we look at biosensors. Okay, so just scroll down to the diagram. You can see the uh, partially permeable membrane there. Um, the question is always worth uh, two marks. Okay, basically it allows, um, uh, in, in this case, because we're detecting glucose, uh, it allows glucose to uh, pass through and enter uh, the electrode um, and it also then prevents other molecules like uh, blood cells and larger molecules. It, it prevents those from uh, uh, passing uh, into the biosensor. Okay so uh, there's my answer there. Um, I've stated that it allows the glucose molecule to pass through but prevents other larger substances like blood cells to enter the biosensor. A uh, little tip for you, uh, because the question is specific, uh, specifically to do with the detection of glucose, all right, you need to keep your answer relevant uh, to the question. Uh, so that's why I've stated that it allows glucose uh, to enter and to pass through the uh, membrane. Um, tr so try and keep it relevant to the question. The examiner wouldn't allow here um, general statements like allow small molecules to pass through uh, because he has told you it uh, is there to detect um, uh, glucose. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, part C then. Describe how the concentration of glucose is transmitted uh, to the display. Again, this is a typical question uh, that comes up for biosensors. A uh, couple of things that you can say here is the uh, glucose obviously uh, enters the active site of the immobilized enzyme. Okay, that glucose is then broken down into products. Uh, the products then are absorbed into the um, transducer and the transducer will convert that 
product, which is a chemical substance, uh, it'll convert that into an electrical signal that is then amplified and uh, the um, signal is then displayed as a numerical value uh, on the display. Okay, so there's my answer then. I'll just say glucose enter, uh, enters the active site of the enzyme and it's converted into a product. Uh, the product is absorbed into the transducer and then converted into an electrical signal. Okay, and uh, there are some other options you could have put there as, as an answer, but we'll discuss those uh, when we look at the uh, mark scheme. Okay, part D, um, explain why the temperature of the biosensor should be kept constant uh, when using it to measure the concentration of glucose in different uh, solutions. Uh, so this is very similar uh, to a question that we've covered previously. Okay, you will find that um, uh, lots of questions get repeated uh, over and over again or they get slightly modified um, uh, but they <laughs> they uh, essentially uh, are asking the same thing um, so here of course you're looking at temperature uh, you know that temperature affects uh, the enzyme activity okay the higher the temperature the the faster uh, the rate of the enzyme catalyzed reaction OK, uh, so you, you've got to keep these temperatures uh, the same, OK, because if you don't, it will affect the enzyme activity um, by changing the rate of the enzyme catalyzed reaction. And if you change uh, the rate of reaction there, you're actually going to get different uh, levels of product being formed and that then can actually affect the result. Um, so ultimately you can get an unreliable result um, if you don't keep uh, the temperatures uh, the same. Okay, so uh, I've just put my answer in there. Um, I've said enzyme activity can be affected by a change in temperature, uh, which can cause a change in uh, the uh, reaction uh, rate. Okay. Um, and if you have a change in the reaction rate, you can actually have uh, a different concentration of product being produced. Uh, and this, of course, can lead uh, to uh, unreliable uh, results. OK, so that uh, that question there was very much um, sort of a practical based question where, uh, you know, in order to do experiments and, and practical biology, you need uh, to make sure all the conditions are kept constant uh, apart from uh, the things you want to to measure okay uh, so in this question you were actually measuring glucose concentration so that's obviously something that you couldn't keep the same because that's what you're measuring but things like temperature needs to be kept constant so you uh, so you don't get unreliable results Okay, and there's the uh, uh, the mark scheme uh, for us. Um, pretty uh, pretty standard there, really. Okay, um, can you just scroll up a little bit so you can see the rest of uh, uh, part D? Okay, and uh, that's the uh, the end of uh, question two.